Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money SG. Now today, let's talk about the budget 2022 that our Singapore Finance Minister just delivered last Friday. And I know that there are many new things raised in this budget, right? So I don't think I will go through all of them. I will really go through those that really affect me and most likely they will affect you as well as an individual or an household. Let's start off with the elephant in the room. GST or goods and services tax. Now we all had this expectation since last year right when the government said that they wanted to raise the GST from 7% to 9% in the future but we do not know when. But during this budget 2022 we had a clear timeline of this already. So the existing GST of 7% will only last till the end of this year 31st December and from next year 1st January 2023 onwards the GST will be raised to 8% and the following year 2024 1st January it will be further raised to 9%. So instead of a 7 to 9% increase, the government is now adopting a gradual increase year on year. So I think that's more palatable and maybe easier for people to go and adapt and change the spending strategy. Now, if I remember correctly, the last time GST was raised from 5 to 7%, I was still a kid, right? Probably in like 2007. And I remember it quite clearly because the price of Maple Story prepaid card raised from $10.50 to $10.70. But that's not the point. The point here is if you're intending to purchase big ticket items especially for your wedding your renovation or you want to buy a car or you have some luxury expenses right then i think the gst is going to hit you harder normal household items i think raising it by one to two percent you won't really feel it unless the suppliers or vendors pass on the cost to you and they most likely will do it. So what I feel is that if you have bigger ticket items to purchase, then you probably want to maybe purchase them this year or next year before the 9% GST hit us really hard. And speaking of GST increase, right, they will also be applied on your commission fees when you go and buy stocks, right? Because when you go and buy stocks, there's actually like a SGX clearance fee and all that fees and stuff. And GST is actually applied on top of those handling fees which is why when we are selecting a broker we try to choose one that is really lower brokerage fees instead of those traditional bank brokers charging us $25 per trade and maybe it's a good time for you to go and sign up for Tiger or Mumu brokers to get your one free Apple stock worth around $200 SGD as of now referring in the pin comment below okay on a more serious note right with the GST increase the government will have to cushion some of the impact and here is where they introduce the GST voucher enhanced version now the original gst voucher only comes in three components right we have a cash payout we have a medisafe top up and we have like a utilities rebate but now they are introducing a brand new component which is cdc voucher and for those who don't know what cdc voucher is it's given to like almost every singaporean household so that they can use this cdc vouchers to go and make some purchases for small household items or groceries in the neighborhood stores within the housing estate it also helps small businesses right to increase their sales because as long as they can accept cdc vouchers then people who want to utilize the cdc voucher will go and visit their shop so boosting their business as well and the government mentioned that each household is going to receive $200 in CDC voucher for year 2023 and 2024 totaling up to $400. So it's not bad. I feel that even though the amount is small, but it can help elevate some of the GST increase concerns. But I guess a lot more people are excited for the cash payout, right? How much are we getting as an adult? So for Singaporeans age 21 and above, they will expect to receive around $700 to $1,600 in terms of GST vouchers cash payout, which will be spread over five years of distribution. And then for Singaporean households, they will be expected to receive $330 to $570 dollars of utility safe vouchers they call it the use safe rebates right so they will directly offset your electricity or utility bill so what about the younger folks below the age of 21 and the senior citizens who are 55 years old and above they will receive additional medisafe top-ups of 450 dollars into their medisafe account so i think that's quite good right help them build some of the medical funds available in their medisafe that they can use to go and pay their medical expenses or insurance premiums so for those people who are saying that the government give you a chicken wing and take back the whole chicken 
Here is your chicken wing coming in the form of GST vouchers. Okay, next point, I'm going to talk about clean energy and carbon emission, right? But I won't talk too much about the carbon tax part because to individuals, that's not the really important thing. I think the more important focus here is on the electric vehicles, right? So the finance minister mentioned that they want to phase out all internal combustion engine vehicles by the year of 2040. Uh, by then, I will be 50 years old. So they're saying that there will be no more ICE cars on the road. Everything will run on electric city for the cars and the government will help to support this electric vehicle infrastructure by providing more charging stations across the island. So I think that's a good move to move towards cleaner energy as well as more sustainable resources of energy. I think when we talk about electric vehicles, there's definitely one very good name that we can think about and that is Blue SG Electric Vehicle Car Sharing. I'm just kidding, it's Tesla, right? Obviously, because Tesla is the world biggest electric vehicle manufacturer and also the highest sales, right, so far. So for Tesla shareholders, more good news for you. At least Singapore is now aligned on the clean energy perspective and we are indeed moving into a more sustainable and renewable energy city. Okay, the next topic I want to talk about is more towards the rich and affluent people in Singapore. So you should know by now that Singapore has a lot of rich people and specifically government want to find more ways to actually tax the rich so that they can gain more tax revenue as well, which is why the personal income tax of these rich people will increase. So what happens from year 2024 onwards is that for individuals who are earning more than $500,000 to a limit of $1 million, they will have a personal income tax rate increase from 22% to 23%. So that's a 1% increase. And if you're a higher income earner, earning more than $1 million of tax accessible income, your total personal income tax rate will be at 24%. So that's a 2% increase from the current 320,000 Singapore dollars. Because previously the highest income tax bracket is only at $320,000 of annual income, but now it has been extended to a whole $1 million tax bracket. So I think it's going to hurt a bit, just a bit for the rich people, right? But you must remember, like I mentioned before, the rich have many ways to go and reduce their taxes, right? They can form like brand new private limited companies. They can form like new tax havens in another country and channel their revenue there. They have professional tax advisors to give them the best tips and strategies to how to minimize their tax. So I don't even think they have to worry about that. But I think it's really a good move though because there are really a lot of high income earners in Singapore. And this is a legitimate way to actually go and extract more wealth from the rich, right? Okay, not only on the income tax for the rich people, right? The government even increased property taxes. But I won't cover too much on that because these property tax increases are more specific to those people who own investment properties where they rent it out to other people for rental income because it is targeted at those properties which has an annual value of more than $30,000, right? So for most of us who stay in HDB, whereby it's for own stay and not for investment purpose, we probably don't rent it out. And even if we rent out like one or two bedrooms, right, it probably won't hit the annual value of 30,000 anyway. So unless you're a property investor, then you have to be really worried for this news because it may hurt quite a bit on your property taxes. Now, the government also introduced additional taxes for luxury cars. So really good, right? We want to cut those spending on luxury cars. I mean, if you really do need a private vehicle, you can go for those normal Japanese car brands. So it's really targeting those luxury car brands like Porsche, like Ferrari, all these kind of Rolls Royce, right? Those are really what the rich people drive, right? So I think it's good um, because they also have the capacity to pay more taxes anyway. But the last thing I really want to touch on is the CPF. I know everyone is really concerned about the full retirement sum and basic retirement sum all that kind of stuff, right? Now, currently, you must understand the CPF basic retirement sum will increase at around 3% annually. That is to actually meet the inflation rate annually, right? But now, what the finance minister just said is that they will increase from 3% to 3.5% every year. So it's going at a more accelerated rate. And that's really to upkeep with the inflation that is ever increasing, right? Especially we see so many things going up in costs. Now, the government is really smart, right? They did not mention anything about the full retirement sum. But if you all know about CPF and you all watch my CPF videos, you all will know that the full retirement sum is just two times of the basic retirement sum. So if the basic retirement sum increase at 3%, your full retirement sum will also increase by 3%. Likewise, for 3.5%, 
your FRS will also increase by 3.5%. And in my videos, I always talk about reaching the full retirement sum in your special account earlier because the 4% annual interest rate of the special account will help you to offset the annual 3% increase in the full retirement sum, right? But now this gap has become a bit smaller because you're using a 4% interest rate versus a 3.5% annual increment of the full retirement sum. So for those people who have not hit full retirement sum yet, your climb or challenge to hit the FRS is going to be much tougher. And that is why on my channel, I always advocate that if you have the means to do so and you have the capacity, just go and achieve your full retirement sum in your special account first. That is of course after you have reached your basic healthcare sum. And the reason is because this FRS limit is going to increase year on year every year and it will become an even further target for you if you don't achieve it in your earlier years. And who knows, maybe after achieving this milestone of full retirement sum, then you can go and take on more risks in life on high risk, high rewards investing. But if you're interested on how I actually managed to reach the full retirement sum by the age of 30, you can watch this video over here where I answered some of the questions asked from the viewers and also address some of the concerns that you may have on the CPF, right? With that, thank you for watching. My name is Christopher. This is Honey Money SG, steering young adults to financial independence.